California-born David Mondragon started his automobile journey working at Ford's assembly plant in Edison, New Jersey. That was almost 25 years ago or so. He got an MBA along the way. Today, he steers Ford Motor Company Canada, which employs something like 7,000 Canadians. It is my pleasure to welcome David Mondragon back to Studio 4 to tell us more. I say 7,000 Canadians. I assume some of them are dual citizens and not quite Canadians, but 7,000 or so? Yeah, the majority of them are Canadians, though. We have uh, four production facilities and a world headquarters or Canadian headquarters in Oakville, Canada. Mm. Yeah. Uh, take me back to your beginnings. I know you did this last yeah. year, but tell yeah. me again. So uh, on the assembly line, New Jersey. In New Jersey, that's right. I started my career in uh, 1985 in Edison, New Jersey. Uh, and that was a long time ago. I finished school. I answered an ad at the Wall Street Journal, and Ford was looking for people. And I, I filled out the ad. I sent in my resume, and lo and behold, I, I ended up working for Ford. And did you have the MBA then or later? Yeah, I, fin I just finished grad school, and I started to work for Ford. And I actually started at a time where we were downsizing. Mm -hmm. Tough time in the industry in 1985. The economy uh, was on the skid, so to speak, in North America. Uh, high tech was really uh, starting to retrench. And uh, when I went to Ford, we just got rid of all of our administrative staff. So mm. uh, the secretaries are gone, any kind of admin staff were gone. Uh, and I took that role. I started with the company for the first seven months. I took dictation, uh, I did typing, I took shorthand, <laughs> whatever they needed. Mm -hmm. I did the mail, I answered the phone. Uh, and quite frankly, I was happy to have a job. I had a good paying job, I got a, a company car, uh, and I was working for an American icon company as well. And the company car was? Oh, my, yeah, I started with it. Actually, it's funny because I started the, the, uh, the day that I arrived, there was two cars available. And there was another gentleman that started that uh, came from another school, two college hires. He got there two hours before me, and he picked up a brand new Mustang GT convertible, white with red <laughs> interior. I'll never forget that car because it was beautiful. Uh -huh. uh, and I picked up a police cruiser, a Crown Victoria blue police cruiser. Uh, and that was the, the last vehicle they had in the, uh, in the lot for me. And, mm -hmm. and I was happy to have it, though. And but it, it didn't a, have a siren or anything. It did have a siren. I couldn't use it. But it had a deactivated siren and it had the, the bunny lamps. It had the whole deal. Right. Yeah, so it was a great vehicle. I got from point A to point B very fast. Mm -hmm. And I had a lot of people pulling over on the highway for me as well. So it was a fun car to have. When you were a young boy in California, did you want to be a cop or a firefighter or anything like that? <laughs> it's funny you say that. My brother, who's here from Seattle, is a fireman. He's I a just fire, met him. Yeah, he's a fire chief from Seattle. He came here last year as well because he's a big fan of yours. Uh, so he watches your show in Seattle as well, See? and so he's come for a second year. Uh, mm -hmm. and, uh, I, and I didn't really have aspirations to go into that field. Uh, I wanted to be in high tech or in automotive, and I ended up in a field that I chose. Take me back uh, to your first days on the job, Ford then. Uh, how it was done then and how it's done now. The, mm. the changes in the, in the company, not at mm. an administrative level, but right. how you put a car together yeah. then and how you put a car together now. Yeah, there's a lot of differences. And, you know, I don't want to get into too much technicality yeah. for the audience, but, but I will say the biggest thing that we're doing differently today is we have common platforms and the products that we build are common throughout the world. Uh, we used to make Focus, for example. We used to make a different Focus in Canada, a different one in the U.S., a different one in South America, a different one in Europe. Now we make the same focus globally, and 80% of that car is the same anywhere you go in the world. So if you're in Europe, if you're in Asia, if you're in South America, if you're in Mexico, uh, you're going to see the exact same focus that you're going to see here in Canada. Uh, and so what that lets us do from a production standpoint, it lets us have very common practices. And it really increases our efficiency and our quality because if we find an issue with a vehicle, we can change it in plants all through the world simultaneously versus just one specific plant and one specific mm. vehicle. It makes sense. Consistency. Yeah. Uh, a Andrew McCready in a column, mm. uh, a writer, uh, said of the three CEOs, Chrysler, GM, and Ford, uh, you most likely got the most sleep in 2009. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there were a few sleepless nights, let me tell you. But, I'm sure. Yeah. But uh, Ford did not fall as hard as the other two, it appears. No, it didn't. If you look at the industry over the last two years, in Canada, the industry from 2008 to 2010, uh, the car industry is down 90,000 pieces. Our sales are up during the same time period, 60,000 pieces. And the reason why is because we have vehicles that consumers really want and value in Canada. We bring great value, and our technology is cutting edge today. We have great quality, uh, great technology. And Canada uh, is one of the most online uh, uh, societies in the world. 
Uh, if you didn't know it, 80 percent of Canadians uh, have internet access, 90 percent have broadband, uh, and 51 percent of Canadians are on Facebook, the highest Facebook penetration in the world. And we're bringing all of that technology to our vehicles, and people can bring it through their smartphones and activate it in our new sure. vehicles. Well, as Shania Twain would tell you, that's because so many of us live in the bush, yeah. <laughs> you know, and, and we need access. Uh, and, that, and, of course, a lot of us live in the cities, as yeah. you know. Uh, but uh, back to how how you determine what a customer wants, what a customer really wants in a car. Low gas mileage makes sense. Mm -hmm. uh, or maybe not. Yeah, gas mileage is a huge driver. Look, fuel prices in Canada are now well over $4.50 a, a gallon. Uh, it's going to get to 5 before long. Oil prices are right around $100 a barrel. It's going to go to 120 in the future uh, as world demand picks up especially as the recovery starts in Japan. Uh, so we're going to see a, a lot of pressure on commodity prices. It'll drive fuel prices higher, and people will look for fuel-efficient vehicles. That'll be a mm. big driver for purchases. At Ford, we have 10 vehicles that lead their segment in fuel economy, and we have four cars alone that get over 50 miles a gallon in Canada, 40 miles in the U.S. because we have empirical gallons here in Canada. But great fuel economy uh, in terms of our new vehicles and great value for consumers mm. as well. What about safety? Safety, uh, we lead the industry with five-star safety ratings. So we have the safest vehicles on the road. Uh, we're very proud of the quality history. Our quality now is on par with the best of the industry. Uh, and then again, the technology is really exciting. And the technology is really the new evolution of the mm -hmm. vehicles. It's, you know, no longer are car companies like Ford building simple transportation devices. We're building very sophisticated communication and entertainment devices and people are bringing that entertainment in their vehicles and they well, like seamless communication sure i mean the car now is kind of an event yeah, it is. The kids are in the back watching television. Right. <laughs> and I know in the front you're not supposed to do that. Yeah. But uh, the, the Bluetooth, all of the little yeah. gadgets and gizmos and where you plug your iPod, I mean, there was a day, you probably don't remember, when you just turned on the radio and that was a big deal. <laughs> uh, I do remember. I, remember. I I just turned 50 last year, so I was my dad's remote when we were younger. We had mm -hmm. the, the turn dial TV. He'd say, go to channel 13, go to the UHF channels. Right. I was the one that ran up and turned the channel. Mm -hmm. so, uh, it has evolved very fast, and, and the technology is going to continue to evolve very fast. And the key to, to manufacturers and one of our key platforms is we're going to deliver state-of-the-art technology for our consumers because we don't consumers aren't going to accept a, a, a car platform anymore that won't adapt to their lifestyle. And lifestyles are based on PDAs now. Mm. They're based on smartphones. And that's how people bring their life and connect their life through transportation, work, play, and home. So tell me about the Focus Electric. When's yeah. it arriving? Well, it arrives in 2012. Uh, we're excited about it. We, we've got a lot of electric vehicles. Electrified platforms are, are really on the cutting edge today, but it's, it's still very early in the evolution of electrified vehicles. So there's hybrid vehicles that are in the market. And we think those are going to be very viable over the next five to ten years. Electric vehicles are going to come to market, but there's so much work that has to be done uh, from government, from industry, from stakeholders uh, to put infrastructure in place to support those. Now, that said, uh, we've got some great opportunity in, that, in those arenas. We've got a, uh, a compact a van now called the Transit Connect that's electric. Matter of fact, we've done our first couple of deliveries. The Canadian Post took delivery of, of one of those units just a month ago. Uh, as we look at electric cars, though, the Focus is an all-new electric that gets 160 kilometers per charge, and it charges in three hours, and that'll be available next three year. Three hours. We just have to have some place to plug it in. Yeah. And <laughs> enough electricity <laughs> to run all these electric cars supposedly we're going mm. to be driving. Will they go to the point where you drive an electric truck? Mm. Uh, I think so. Is that possible? I, it is possible, and I think so. I think you're going to see more hybrids in that arena and then eventually you'll see electric. I think you're going to see electric, electric platforms across all vehicles, okay. all manufacturers, all makes. But again, it's probably a decade away from, from seeing that level of proliferation. And the reason why is infrastructure. There's no place to charge them. 90% uh, of Canadians don't park cars inside. They park them outside. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's not like you can run an extension cord from your garage out to your car. It's, that's not going to happen. Uh, so there has to be infrastructure put in place at work, uh, at grocery stores, at malls, mm -hmm. uh, and at home to be able to support that. There's legislation in place, even here in Vancouver, to support it, but it's very slow adaption.